Williams. I'm the parish priest of Hay St. Mary, uh, which is a nearby parish to this one. We're here at Malchus Parish Church uh, to appreciate uh, and think about the fine organ which has just been restored. I studied piano organ and composition in Trinity College of Music in London and I play uh, the organ actually for the Hay Festival, uh, silent films on the fine organ that we've got at St Mary's, uh, illustrating uh, various films. Uh, the last one I did was Metropolis and uh, I did one here in aid of the organ fund, uh, Nosferatu, so it's rather fun. Uh, playing for a vampire film in, in a Christian church. Someone came up to me and said, isn't that unsuitable? And I said, no, it's a Gothic film and it's very Gothic architecture. And so that was rather good. tapping your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. That's a piece of cake compared to being an organist because you've got to be uh, uh, use your feet independently from each hand and uh, there's quite a lot really going on in the organ loft which people just would never guess at. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a one-man band, one man band is the organist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not only is this organ a fine musical instrument, it's also a very beautiful addition visually to the church. And the organ has been regilded and repainted, the casework, and it's very evident that the colours of the uh, used in, in the embellishment of the organ case are um, reflecting the fine 14th century window uh, by the side of me here. So a lot of thought, a lot of care and a lot of love obviously was put into getting this instrument to be what it is. And again, uh, it's marvellous to see that uh, the organ here is loved and people are valuing something which should be valued, which is a fine organ. The sound of the organ, of any pipe organ, instantly makes us think of Christianity, of the church. It's the instrument which is traditionally used for the accompaniment of singing in the church. And yet, interestingly enough, in the very, very early organs, 
um, they were looked on by Christians with a great deal of suspicion because, of course, when Constantine uh, started building churches and Christians were allowed to meet, there was a folk memory of an early organ called the Hydrolas, which would have accompanied, um, which is an outdoor, very highly powered sounding organ, and it would have accompanied the poor Christians who were being thrown to lions and being dismembered and tortured, etc. So there was that initial suspicion of the organ. So it's interesting that when we think of how uh, quintessentially uh, churchy we think the sound of an organ is. Of course there's some branches of Christianity which are still very suspicious of the organ. Uh, we think of the Scottish Presbyterians who used to say that there was a devil in every pipe, which is quite funny. Many people think that the pipes of the organ can be counted on the outside. Those are the only pipes that there are. And uh, people are very surprised to discover that there are hundreds and sometimes thousands of pipes within the casework of the organ. These things here are called stops and for each stop there are 60 odd pipes for every one. Now people say why do we need all these devices? Well I suppose the nearest analogy one could use for uh, the raison d'etre for, for these stops is that it's rather like an artist with his palette. He has a number of paints there of different colours and shades and he can mix them in order to provide the exact colour that he would wish to have. The beef dinner sound, if I may use that kind of term, of the organ, the English organ anyway, is the open diapason and invariably those that you see some of the pipes in the casework above me here. Um, I'll just play a few chords. That's the fundamental organ tone. And that is on the great organ. Uh, the lower keyboard here is called the great, and the top keyboard is called the swell. Now the top keyboard, the pipes of that are enclosed in a box, a swell box, so that when the little pedal is pressed, the Phoenician blind kind of things, um, shaped like Phoenician blinds, they open up and allow the sound to come through more clearly and more loudly. There's an open diapason, a horn diapason, on the swell, so it's a similar kind of sound but lower scale, smaller scale. I've got the box closed now, but I shall open it while holding a chord, and you hear. The box is open, the box is closed. So that's um, a handy device for being able to um, sensitively um, create the sound that you wish. Now the bottom note of an eight foot rank of pipes, like the open diapason, um, which I played just earlier, that bottom note, the pipe, the speaking length, that is from the mouth of the pipe to the top, is eight foot long. So it's more or less uh, unison pitch, it's um, the pitch of a, grand, of a piano. Uh, now, not all pipes, the lowest note is eight foot, some are 
four foot so that here's the eight foot pipe I'll shove that open that piece and then I'll pull up the four foot principle and it sounds an octave higher and then there's a two foot which will sound an octave higher than that again so there's the two foot sounding there's the four foot sounding and then the eight foot and really these higher pitched um, stops are there to add clarity and brilliance. If everything was just in eight foot tone it would be rather a dull instrument but with the addition of four foots and two foots uh, then there is that brightness and definition of tone. There's one other thing about this too is that there is a stop here called the twelfth now that's interesting because the 15th, that's two foot, but the 12th is two and two thirds. And I'm pressing, that's the 15th, and yet, even though I'm pressing the same note, it sounds 12 notes higher. The reason for what's called a mutation stop, which a twelfth is, is that it emphasizes the innate harmonics, the oversounds of the other registers or stops. I'll maybe play a hymn for you, and then I will add the twelfth and fifteenth uh, after. Hear the difference. make it brighter. which I have been speaking of are of metal but there are wooden stops here uh, so 60 odd wooden pipes per stop and they produce a far more fruity sound this one's called um, the Clarabel, Clarabel flute <laughs> said before, uh, when the lowest note of the particular rank uh, is four foot or two foot, then it adds a brightness. Here are the eight foot, here's the eight foot flute just sounding by itself, then I'll add, um, I'll add a four foot flute to it.
for the organist's palate, as it were, and that is uh, known as a reed stop or reed stops. And there is on this organ a swell oboe. And these are generally metal. You occasionally come across a wooden, um, wooden pipes with metal resonators inside. And that is, well, it's reminiscent of the orchestral or oboe. I'll just solo that out on the swell organ. The reason why there are additional keyboards is that you can solo things out maybe with a louder stop for the solo or something of such a different quality that it stands out. So I'll just play uh, a, a little thing by Wesley um, and that's about the right date really for um, the building of this organ. Wesley was about when this organ was built. Something's wrong. That's very useful as a solo stop, but also it can be used in combination with all the rest of the organ, uh, giving uh, a fuller sound. I'll play uh, a hymn, not sure which one yet, and um, the second verse I'll, I'll, I'll draw the, I'll unite the two keyboards so that what I play here is duplicated up there. And actually you can see that happening there, duplicating exactly what I'm doing here. But I'll start off on the grate, and then I will draw the swell to grate, stop, which will commingle the stops of the swell with the grate. the swell, that's the higher keyboard and the grate, but of course there's another department which is uh, right under my feet, the pedal board. And that uh, we've already thought about eight foot tone, four foot tone, two foot tone, 
but the pedals as they provide the bass sounds of the organ they are 16 foot now this organ wouldn't have room for a full open 16 foot pipe ranging up uh, 20 odd stop uh, notes up on the pedal board and therefore in order to have 16 foot tone without having a 16 foot pipe there is such a thing as stopped pipes now stopped pipes are as the name suggests they're stopped at the top so that the sound bouncing from the mouth of the pipe going resonating up it bounces back down and therefore gives the impression of uh, being twice as big as it actually is so there is one only one organ stop here uh, on the pedal but you can couple it through uh, the pedal to um, the grate on, 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 on this organ so G the lowest G on the grate is can be played by playing bottom G on the pedal board and it will depress the note correspondingly but if I draw the pedal boredom then it will sound an octave lower here the eight foot tone and then the pedal borden is drawn and we have that nice substantial bass sound if the organ didn't have that then a lot of the rather lovely rich um, deep sounds of the organ wouldn't be there. I'll play, um, let me see, a small hymn. Uh, no, I'll, I'll play a, a little thing by Wesley again, uh, as he is roughly the same date as this organ. Um, Lead me, Lord, and I will introduce the pedal borden halfway through and then you'll hear the difference that 16 foot tone on the pedal makes. music in London and uh, spent three years there but it's interesting actually because uh, I learned most of my music by 
a, a very, very lovely person who um, was full of love and wisdom and, and sweetness. And uh, she was very fond of me and I was very fond of her. And it's within the context of of love, really, that we 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 can only learn through that. Uh, if you have a terrifying teacher, then you don't learn very much. <laughs>